Hey there friends, happy Thursday to you. You know it's Thursday, so I couldn't I couldn't resist doing a post on Thursday. Uh, last weekend, this past weekend, that Infinity Wars movie came out with the Avengers. We um, we always wait on movies uh, till they get to like Netflix or something. So we didn't see it, but I'm very anxious to see it for a couple of reasons. One that it it has Thor in it. Mm hmm It has Thor in it. And that's two reasons. Okay, I could go on with just that one reason, but let's let's progress beyond that. It has Thor in it, and it has the cast from Guardians of the Galaxy, which is also a movie that I really do like. And um, my brother-in-law worked on the movie down in Fayetteville, Georgia. He was, he was, uh, I do not know exactly what he did, <laughs> um, but he is a, a lighting, uh, lighting crew chief, lighting engineer, that kind of thing. So anyway, so now just some little tidbits for you on, on this Thor's day. I have a couple new things to go in the shop and these are both, the, these both contain our, um, Leave your clothes in a foreign country so you can bring back paper, ephemera from Italy. And I am, I'm like, I'm looking at the box where my paper ephemera from Italy is. And I got to tell you guys that it is dwindling really, really fast. And, and that kind of makes me sad because I thought that I had picked up so much. And I did, you guys. I had a lot of poundage of paper, but, you know, paper does weigh a lot. But anyway, you know, we'll, we'll work with it until there's none left to work with. You know, basically just kind of the way we roll here. We do, uh, we use what we have, and when it's gone, then we figure something out. And But I don't think I'm going to be going to Italy anytime soon, so... So, you might want to keep that in mind if, if you are uh, purchasing these old journals for the Italy ephemera inside. I finished this little journal off with a, a bit of beads. These are glass beads, kind of a mixture of glass beads and some plastic beads. These are those really pretty um, glass flowers, and then this a glass bauble right here. I am, um, you know, it's, it's finally summer here. It's probably 90 degrees upstairs where I'm working right now, but you know, that's okay. But I really do think that I'm going to have to drag some fans out, which is real funny because Monday, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I got home last Friday. Monday, I was going to have to turn the heat on uh, just to warm the house up. So, you know, they always say, uh, if you don't like the weather in Richmond, to hang around one more day because it will change. <laughs> so, you know, snow's on the way. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Our little book, this is a really festive green color, and I really do like it. It seems like the world is just popping green. Uh, I was driving this morning, and I have not driven since April the... 14th, and that was an experience. I haven't driven in a really long time, but I had to get out and run errands this morning. Um, so it was kind of, uh, it was weird to be behind the wheel of a car, but it was cool to be behind the wheel of a car. Um, when we were in Venice, you know, Venice does not have cars. You have boats, you don't have motorcycles, you don't have very many bicycles even. Uh, I saw very few bicycles. Um, mostly everything, you know, you're, you're hoofing it on foot. No motorcycles or anything like that, which, you know, the, the water and the boats and all that was it was really enchanting. I really liked Venice. Um, this is your story right here and your notebook right here. I put a fun little butterfly right here for you. This is a ticket that says hold. If you saw my video yesterday, I worked in an upscale clothing shop, dress shop, when I was uh, in the mid 80s. And this is what we would use uh, in that dress shop. You know, when somebody bought something or put it on hold, they were undecided about it, then we would, we would hold the dress for them. I did find some 1988 um, 
I think this is Vintage Home Magazine, Country Home Magazine. I did find one more issue of that, and I really do love this, and I thought it might be fun to kind of look at these images and then think about, um, this is super cool because this is some, some crochet. I've kind of gotten a huge appreciation for... Uh, needlework like crochet or making lace because we did get to visit Burano and I saw a woman making lace and I understand that it is a a dying art you know because the kids do not want to of course stay on Burano and learn lace making or go to the lace making school and uh, it is it's something that will not be around you know in 20 years this is another one of the stunning images that I picked up uh, in, I think this one was from Venice, and just some Italian ephemera here. The Peggy Guggenheim Museum is in Venice, and I thought that was so pretty. You know, you can kind of think about uh, this kind of abode as opposed to the... Um, to the homes that are featured in Country Living Magazine. This is a little fold out for you and a map. On the front of this it says Venice Secrets Crime and Justice Exhibition. I did not get to go to that. I thought it sounded really interesting. Um, but we, um, we, in, we went to a lot of museums when we were in Venice instead. And we spent a lot of time on St. Saint Mark's Square, just kind of people watching and having picnics and watching the birds and that kind of thing as well. But that, that museum sounded really cool. I don't think you can have a, you know, you can't have a, a 1200 year history without a little bit of mystery, right? <laughs> it was just super cool. Um, you know, a lot of, I got a great photo that I'm going to share with you guys because we toured the Diodos the Doji's Palace uh, in Venice, and we toured the prison, uh, the notorious prison where Casanova escaped from, which was, you know, a uh, an incredible feat. Um, but there was, uh, there was a bridge there called the Bridge of Sighs, and the Doji's Palace was where criminals were, um, they were given their sentences, and then you would pass through the Bridge of Sighs on the way to the prison where you would be. I mean, they were pits, um, scary looking. But anyway, uh, I took a picture, and it is a disturbance, and I just thought it was so cool, and I'll share that with you guys. Most of you know that I am, um, I really do uh, love the paranormal. I spent a couple of years, um, I spent a couple years uh, helping a paranormal investigator and had some really remarkable experiences, but I had never taken, I had never had a disturbance photo before, but it is super cool, so I'll show it to you in a later video. This is our texture element, so in the texture element we feature um, papers, napkins, deli papers, tissue papers, you've got some bling, some prima flowers, some metal tape wood, styrofoam, and this damask uh, tissue, damask was hot, 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 y'all, in the 1600s. <laughs> it was on chairs, it was on um, walls. I was, uh, the Diodo Palace where we stayed, um, of course, was an old palace, but the walls were covered in damask material, flocked damask. Very, very beautiful, um, but odd because I, I did not probably shouldn't have done this, but I did kind of press on it one morning at breakfast. Every morning we had a continental breakfast. Oh my goodness, it was so elegant, y'all. You know, just to have breakfast. You know, have have go downstairs, have have a cappuccino, have breakfast. Um, breakfast there is a little bit different. It is. Um, it's very sweet heavy. You know, you might have cakes, you might have croissants, um, boiled eggs, never anything fried. Uh, you can make your own, um, you know, you, you made your own toast in a little like panini press, that kind of thing. Um, it, it was just really super cool. Uh, 
again, you know, the place settings were, were immaculate and beautiful. The service was gorgeous. It was, um, it was really interesting, but that damask is everywhere, and I do mean everywhere. So we are finishing up right here our little um, element, our little texture texture elements that we have going on here and I will put an I card um, right up here to point you to the video that I did to show you how to use these texture elements. Inside this little uh, key envelope is an actual key. Um, I'm really grateful to Carol Stanley for um, for sharing some keys with us and they're, they're old metal keys and some of them are actual skeleton keys and they're super super cool all right uh, we are into a bit of DIY no this is writers and language so let's take a look in here I've got some envelopes here for you um, I always think that you know I'm I mean I, I know you guys probably realize this but this is a card so you can pull this out Use some of the text pages, maybe some of the images, and make yourself a card to send to someone. You know, Mother's Day is coming up, Father's Day is coming up very quickly, and, you know, it would be fun to DIY you a card to send to a loved one. So we've got all kinds of fun things here, German text, I think we've got some Swedish text, um, I love these, these are stories, and they're, um, I don't know what the date on this was, but one story was about how a lady should arrange her writing desk. Now, this is not the writing desk one. I, I don't remember which one this was, but the stories are just very sweet. It's kind of a magazine style thing. Have a little bit of, uh, again, Italian ephemera for you. All this Italian writing here is so beautiful. Um, a, a couple people that we talked to were going down the Amalfi Coast, and I understand that from Rome you can travel south, and the the, um, the scenery is just absolutely stunning that way. And you know why not? I th you know you're going by Greece, you're going by the Mediterranean, just exceptional. This again is Saint Mark's Basilica. And this is a fresh postcard for you to play with or to send to someone. I just love this. I thought it was so sweet. You know, he's on top of the world. He's hanging on to a heart. It's uh, an image from the front of a greeting card. I really do love to use those kind of images. This is a DIY yourself. Some more cards. A table tent right here. Um, I like to use these for inspiration. You know, if, I, if I'm not feeling quite myself, here's something that happened to me. Um, I, I, I usually don't share this, but in 09, actually it was 08, um, my business crashed. And, uh, you know, it was during that time where everybody was having trouble. You know, it wasn't a, exactly a depression. It was a recession. And since I was in the entertainment business, it was um, a lot of people that I worked with simply could not afford a, a publicist. So everything went crash, y'all. And to make myself feel better, because I knew that I could not go down the path of feeling bad, you know, or constant worry or constant stress or constant fretting, I, um, it was in February of 08, and I bought myself, um, Valentine's candy that was reduced. Um, I bought myself a whole box of it. And every evening, I would wrap myself two pieces of that chocolate, and... I would wrap it very pretty, you know, in some gift paper or something, um, and tie it with a little bow, and put it on my desk, and the, so the next day, when I got up, I had a little treat on my desk, as I was trying to, and it was chocolate, <laughs> it was a chocolate treat, uh, as I was trying to reinvent myself and reinvent my business and make my house payment and that kind of thing. But anyway, what I'm what I was getting at with the table tent is is it's fun to 
you know, to kind of create something like this and put it on your desk to keep you inspired. And there's plenty of imagery in here for you to make yourself a table tent to make yourself feel good. We've got a couple vintage greeting cards in here. I especially love this one with the angel. This is the Harry Nelson Ephemera 1946. Little old Dan Cupid and me. I just thought that was just cute. And this Valentine's card is signed from your loving grandmother, your ever-loving grandmother. Isn't that sweet? This one is signed the Fourniers. And we've got an umbrella guy that our sweet friend Donna sent us. Some um, painty papers right here. I got a jelly plate, and now it's finally, you know, warm enough to play with a jelly plate, and I'm very excited about going downstairs and being able to paint in my sunroom studio, but I'm not really sure I can move everything that I'm using for bookmaking down to my sunroom studio, so I've got an idea for a different sort of uh, journal that I'm going to put in the shop and I'll show you guys kind of a sample of those um, that would be something that I could I could do downstairs and enjoy my sunroom but at the same time you know get something done I did I mean obviously these books are super extensive and I, I do have a lot of stuff, and I just don't think it's going to fit in the sunroom, which um, I love my sunroom. So, got to figure something out there. <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet. This is a little envelope with lots of painty papers and fabric scraps in here for you to play with. A few pressed flowers. I thought that was really very, very pretty. And a, um, a tag from a pair of pants. You know, tag, clothing tags are super, super cool. And we've got, of course, a bookmark right here for you. This little butterfly journal, the closure on it is a, um, it's just a rhinestone, a little rhinestone right here. And it's, it's, it's tiny, y'all, so just kind of be aware of that. Um, it is, it is a little bit of a tiny closure. Okay. We have some new paper, uh, I'm sorry, new fabric from Carol. Look how sparkly and pretty it is. And it's pink and brown. You don't see pink and brown a whole lot. I really gravitated to pink and brown. I, I thought it was a great color combination. When I was building fairy houses, um, I did a lot of pink and brown. Um, it just, you know, the pink seemed to offset the naturalness of the sticks and stones and, and that kind of thing that I was working with and bark and that sort of thing. It's finished very simply with um, a crystal point from my art angel. I love that. And a little bit of Swawa Orvsky sparkly stuff. You know, sparkly things. <laughs> Let's crack this open and see what's inside. I really do love the sparkle, y'all. It just makes me happy, happy, happy. And um, this starts off with a little B, a little chipboard B. And this is your story element in your storybook right here. We have some papers. Uh, this is um, a little... I forgot where this came from, but I thought it was really pretty. It says, New York. My little buddy lives in New York. My son lives in New York. He works in New York. He actually moved there when he was uh, 15. So here's what happened. He said he was going to visit his uncle. And two weeks later, he called me and um, I said, okay, when, when are you coming back? When's your plane uh, supposed to land? I've got my pen and paper right here so I can write down your flight number and time. And he said, mom, I'm not coming back. And I was like, buddy, you know, you're 15. Um, you, you can't stay there. And he said, well, I've already auditioned and enrolled at the Manhattan School of the Arts. And I was like, what? So, you know. 15, he decides that he's going to do what he wants to do, and I have to tell you, he has absolutely thrived. Um, he works for a great company, um, found a beautiful lady to spend time with. I'm just, I'm very, very proud of him, but oh Lord, that was a big shocker. You know, you go off on vacation and, and that's it. You're not coming back. <laughs> this is a menu, um, believe it or not, a takeaway menu. 
from a, uh, I think that's from a restaurant in Florence. These are a few images from the Da Vinci Children's Museum. A map. And we have some bird elements here. And we're really running low on anything that has to do with birdies. I have enjoyed so much sitting on my deck and listening to the birds since I've been home. It's really a delight to hear them singing. And my trees are kind of low to the ground so I can see them as they're sitting there chirping. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Yes, y'all, I am enjoying my home. You've got some home plans right here. Um, maybe that will prompt you to um, to think about your own home or maybe a dream home and start making plans in that direction. Or maybe it will just um, give you an opportunity to appreciate what you have. You know, in my case, it makes me super appreciate everything that I have. I, I was away for a while and there's nothing really like coming home. This is a street index for streets in Florence. I thought that was super cool. Leonardo da Vinci Museum. Remember I told you guys this is, this is a kid's museum. But it's super cool. If we would have had time, I probably would have gone there. I would like to have seen like the recreations of the da Vinci work. We've got an umbrella guy here for you. This little bird thing says we're much stronger if we hold hands and become one. I love that sentiment. This is our texture element. I'll just go over very briefly what's in the texture element. And again, I'll put the iCard up here so you can kind of see how to work with these things. You've got a napkin, deli paper, tissue paper, bling, prima flowers, metal tape, uh, wood, styrofoam, chipboard, grung, grunge board, cardboard, metal, and bubble wrap, metal tape, and um, gloss photo paper, which I, I don't know if you guys work with this or not. It is, uh-oh, that's, excuse me, you guys. That's not gloss photo paper. Oh my goodness, I need to switch that out. I'm sorry, folks. Please forgive me for sneezing. This is a homemade feather for y'all. I love making these feathers and hope to get some more made. A little bit of writing elements for you. Um, this is the Shakespeare, the big globe book of Shakespeare, which I really do like. And text pages. This is from Inspector Poirot. These books are so old and they really do show their age. And I love that they show their age. They're just so pretty. And this is about traveling on the train. We traveled by train from Venice to Florence and Florence to Rome. My gosh, it was a fun experience, y'all. It was that, that hot, hot speed train. And going from Florence to... I mean, going from Venice to Florence, uh, you know, you, you kind of see the Tuscany area. And I was trying to take photos, but I forgot that it was a high-speed train. And it was like, mm-hmm, those didn't turn out so great. But I saw castles, y'all. I saw ancient castles on hills. Oh, my goodness. It was so much fun. And they have, like, a dining car, and you can get, um, you know, you can get snacks. Like, when, one time uh, when we were on the train, we got olives and um, a kind of ham stuff called speck and prosciutto. Prosciutto is just everywhere, as is Prosecco, which I really, really, really like Prosecco. Um, that's another chat for another time because I'm not I'm, I'm not a drinker, but I found it super refreshing and it was just fun to be on a train and to be having a delightful meal and a delightful conversation with my sister and my brother-in-law. And, you know, we would I had a glass of Prosecco. My sister had um, she likes Bud Light. So she had a Bud Light and it was just fun. You know, somebody else was driving. <laughs> I've got some vintage cards for you. Uh, this has a feather in his cap. A little fellow at your house. What a feather in your hat. So sweet. This is Nielsen Ephemera. Let's see. This is from 1946, I believe. I love the stamps on these things. Uh, of course, this is your card making section, so DIY yourself an inspirational card or a card to send to somebody. Um, I think it's always nice to get, get a handmade homemade card, and I really, really do love to make homemade cards, um, but I, I 
just I haven't had a whole lot of time lately to do it. This is a package of fabric scraps and fun things for you to play with, painty papers, that sort of thing. Um, this is a, this is a mini book, and you can fill it with paper, and um, you know you can staple or sew the um, at the spine of it. This says Merry Christmas and lots of love, Daddy. And this is, uh, I believe this is Georgie who is scribbling his name by 1954. One of those really pretty flopped cards. You know how much I love those. And our next signature is a little bit about fashion. I didn't go to the opera, but there was a there was a shop that we would go by frequently when we left our hotel that had exquisite costumes in the in the um, in their window. I gotta tell you, window dressing in Venice, y'all, is an art. Every window is just stunning. It just makes you want to just stand there and stare. And I, I, I mean, it's just. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. A little bit about food right here. Here's a photo of, of kind of a, a typical sort of upscale restaurant. And we did not do upscale restaurants. We kind of stuck to uh, the mom and pop's places, which is really what we wanted to do. Um, excellent, excellent food. Like I said, they do not rush you through a meal. When we would get finished with our meal, we would have to ask for the check. And uh, there was one restaurant where we asked for the check three times before it came. If you're visiting Italy, you should kind of be aware that there is a... Um, some restaurants have a cover charge, so they're going to charge you to just sit down. Um, in Italy, they don't tip. Um, there's no section to put a tip when you get your receipt from your meal. Um, so you might want to keep that in mind as well. I guess that cover charge kind of keeps, um, kind of keeps the tip thing in order for people. Um, um, sometimes there's no cover charge. You know, when, when we think of cover charge, we think of getting in a venue, you know, and there's a cover charge to get in the venue. But in Italy, that cover charge is just to sit down. You know, you're going to be charged, you know, like, I don't know, two euro or five euro or sometimes even more to just sit down. So, you know, if you're traveling and if you're being frugal, then you just might want to be mindful of, of that policy for cover charge. I will have these books in the store a little bit later on today. I want to thank everybody who bought the book yesterday. It sure was nice to get back make some books, put them in the shop, and have them push out of the shop. I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. These are my new-ish journals. Now, I'm not positive about selling the ones that I've, that I've already made, um, but this is what they will be like. They are basically a zine. This is made from a paper bag. Um, a lot of mixed media, a lot of painty papers. Um, they even have kind of pullouts here. Um, treat yourself the way you would treat a small child. Feed yourself healthy food. Spend time outside. Put yourself to bed early. Let yourself take naps. Don't say mean things to yourself. Love yourself. Um, I made these several years ago, and I really, really enjoyed it. I learned to make zines from Jenny Belly. And I was just thinking that it might be, you know, something kind of fun to put in the shop, something a little bit, you know, different if you're looking for small gifts for people or, you know, small gifts for yourself. These also would be great things to just stick into the flowish journals that, uh, that come out of the shop. But they, they uh, obviously I made a whole lot because I got kind of addicted to making them and really, really enjoyed them so much. Um, I think I made this one like four years ago. But they have little tuck spots in them and just, they're just fun. They're just fun. So if you guys are like interested in seeing some of these in the shop, um, just give me a, a thumbs up and say, hey, we'd like to see more zine 
type journals in your shop and that just kind of helps me um, kind of get a bead on what you guys are liking and what you guys uh, would like to see me make. Thank you for hanging out with me y'all. Have a great Thursday. Talk to you soon. Bye.